Guys, do you ever find that you are eating healthy, you're following a plan, you're making it a lifestyle, but then eventually at some point you get bored and just frustrated because you are tired of eating the same old healthy things? Well, you gotta stick around for this episode. We are talking about hundreds of ways to add variety with just a few tweaks of what you're already doing. I think this is gonna be a game changer. Well, folks, welcome to week six of the Shape Up for Summer Accountability Program. Can you believe it? Just a few weeks away from the official start of summer, and here we are. So I know you've been working hard. I know you've been really following those habits, turning them into more permanent lifestyle changes. But I know what can happen at this stage. You start to feel like you're getting a little burnt out, a little bit bored of the same old thing. So I've got a cure for you today. And the cure is how to add variety to keep things interesting, keeping your healthy meals appetizing and exciting every day of the week. You know, at the beginning, I was talking about repetition and doing the same things over and over again, even recommending eating the same meals for a while just to get the habit down. But once the habit gets a little bit ingrained, that's when the boredom starts to creep in. So this is the point where it's okay to, sub to mix things up. And I'm gonna explain how to do that without throwing you off track. So let's start with some examples. First of all, variety to meals. How do we add variety to meals? Let me use the example of baked chicken. You know, I hear a lot from clients. I get tired of eating the same old thing. I just eat so much chicken and salad. You won't believe how many times I've heard that because it's true. A lot of times when you're trying to eat healthy, you'll find something that you enjoy eating like salad or baked chicken. And then you'll kind of repeat that because you know it's a safety food. It's, uh, it's healthy and it tastes good enough. The problem is when you repeat that healthy meal over and over, you get a little bit burned out from it and you don't really know what's a safe way to choose something else. Maybe the chicken and salad became really convenient to prepare and you don't really have to think about it. So it became a convenience, a convenience food of the healthy version. The thing is, if you don't have a lot of options for convenient healthy foods, it's hard to brainstorm other ideas. So let me help you out with this. We're gonna talk about three different ways to mix things up at your meals that I think is gonna really change things for you. The first thing is to mix up the flavor palette. Baked chicken has been one of your go-tos and you've been doing lemon pepper chicken my suggestion is to mix it up with 12 different other flavors. Okay, I'm gonna read a list for you. We've got barbecue, honey mustard, pesto, marinara, curry, Italian seasoning, peanut sauce, cucumber yogurt, chili thai, marinated citrus, sage and thyme, maple glaze, coconut crusted. I could go on, but I'm gonna stop at 12, okay? I mean, that might, actually, that might have been 13, a little baker's dozen for you. So. The point is that there's a lot of different ways to flavor the same old chicken so that you're not eating the same old chicken. I'll hear people go with lemon pepper chicken because that's their safety, but they never try adding different flavors. All these flavoring options are available right off the grocery store shelf. But I know some people have some health concerns and they're trying to avoid sodium. So you might find a recipe instead that's a lower sodium version for a couple of these and do a substitution. Those are 13 different ways to do the same piece of chicken. So in addition to that, you could also mix up the flavor by changing chicken to something else. So what about chicken thighs or beef, pork, fish, shellfish, tofu, tempeh? So now you have over 60 flavor combinations because you could do all of those types of proteins with a different flavor. See, what I'm, see where I'm going with this? But it doesn't stop there. Now we're gonna move on to cooking style. I think this one is overlooked because you don't really think of how much of a difference it makes to bake something versus grill something. So let's take the baked chicken again and then apply 10 different other examples of cooking styles to that. Uh, you could do a whole roasted chicken. You can do just baked chicken thighs, grilled chicken legs and wings, chicken kebabs, ground chicken, stewed chicken, shredded chicken, stuffed chicken, stir fried chicken, chicken patties. So see where I'm going? There's even more when you apply that to all the other protein sources as well. Mix up those cooking styles with your 60 flavor combinations and you've got 600 different ways to add variety to your meals. So it's kind of a big number. You're probably not gonna have 600 different dishes all year long. I know it's a lot to keep track of. So one thing I recommend to make it easier, you can write a list or you can use a shortcut like a meal planning app. It, it will do all the thinking for you as far as suggesting flavor combinations. Sometimes they add in just simple ingredients like a nut or a spice to kind of make something that's kind of boring, exciting and new again. There's one app that I recommend called Meal Lime, and they actually have a, they also have a website as well. 
you can browse through hundreds of meal ideas. Select the ones that you wanna try that look interesting, get the recipe, get the grocery list, and there's even a feature on the app where you can have the groceries delivered. So talk about saving time. There's a lot of other apps out there as well, but I like Mealine because they, they have a pretty robust free version and they also have the website version as well. So let me give you the third option to add more variety to your meals. So this is sort of a, this is more of a seasonal prompt. So you know how grocery stores will highlight what's on sale based on what's in season, or you'll see this in restaurants, you'll see certain types of salads or baked vegetables that are more in season. The same type of thing applies to home cooking. You can follow the seasons to, to help guide you through the year on what to cook. Usually fruits and vegetables taste better when they're in season, so there is that incentive to save your fresh tomato recipes for the summertime and do more of your root vegetable recipes in the fall. In the spring and the summer, you'll see a shift more towards fresh greens or asparagus, berries, and tomatoes in the summertime. And in the winter, you're, you've got your more of your root vegetables, potatoes, apples, and citrus fruits. You don't have to follow seasonality, but it can be a prompt and it can really, it's helpful as a guide to help you think of ideas and utilize what's in season while it's in season. So I'm hoping by the end of this show, you'll have a lot more ideas of what you might try as far as flavor combinations, but also be thinking of a strategy that you might use to help you brainstorm ideas for the entire year. Whether you end up going like a seasonal quarterly basis and changing up the way that you cook, or you might be prompted to do it on a monthly basis. There's nothing worse than a getting stuck in a food rut when you're trying to follow a healthy eating plan. And especially when you're trying to turn that healthy eating habit into a permanent part of a lifestyle, getting stuck on eating the same old thing does not make it appealing to keep eating healthy. So let's keep the excitement going. We're week six, it was just a few weeks away from the official start of summer. So hopefully this was a fresh injection of ideas and meal excitement, especially if you check out the Meal Line app. You'll see a lot of different ways that these recipes incorporate the flavors and seasonal flavors to kind of make meals exciting again, especially when you've been on a healthy eating streak for several weeks. It starts to get a little stale if you keep going back to the same old thing. So it's time to mix it up, folks. And let me know your favorite new recipe that you're trying. If you're checking out the Meal Line app or you're using a different website to see different recipes and different ways to keep things interesting, I'd love to hear your favorite recipe that you've tried new this year since doing the challenge. And next week, we're gonna focus on a really fun topic called rewards and the do's and the don'ts of setting up a reward system for staying on track. Another motivator to help you stay plugged in to finishing out a program and keeping it going as a lifestyle. Have a great rest of your week, guys, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye.